right, everybody. Hey, Hello. thanks to our four, four first subscribers. This is awesome. Uh, so today is the pilot episode for the Basement Cast. Otherwise known as the Basement Bros. Well, yeah. But mainly just the Basement Cast. It is the Basement Cast. Uh, now today our, our, our plan is to play some Halo while we talk to everybody about, uh, about... You know, the life, you know, things. Life, uh, the stonks, the stonks, especially right now. Stonks, uh, like censoring. Yeah, things censoring, like that. Censoring is a huge one. Uh, don't don't get us wrong. This is not just a podcast where we whine about shit. This is a <laughs> podcast where we're gonna have some fun. You know, obviously, we're gonna talk about some, uh, you know, like, you know, like experiences that we've had in the past. You know, it's it's gonna be good. It's gonna be good. It's possible you're gonna hear gameplay. Yes, and that's kind of unavoidable. And possibly a, a cat or a dog bashing <laughs> into the door of the basement. Yes, we are in a literal basement. That's why we're the basement cast. <laughs> this is legitimately <laughs> like oh the most jankiest setup ever. But uh, yeah, so, so to get us started off, uh, we were talking about how they're uh, how they're redoing Mass Effect. Yes. The other day, yeah, you know, um, you know what I just don't understand is that the, they have the ideal to, you know, change art, you know, because censorship. They they want to censor, um, you know, like somebody's art just because it shows a little ass or it shows a little, a little Miranda. Yeah, yeah, it shows a little bit, you know. But, like, come on, literally Cyberpunk 2077, or whatever it was, right? I mean, GTA does way worse. Yeah, I literally don't play this, whatever, the Cyberpunk, you know, the, that, that's another fiasco we, we, we're we probably going to end up talking about. Uh, there's a lot of things that are probably going to come up. But, yeah, no, no, but, like, I, there's literal scenes where you take, you could take women or men home, and it's like, whoa. Yeah, it doesn't make sense. Like, why would you censor that when there's, like, even worse romance scenes to be censored? Right? and, like... The, which you shouldn't, obviously. And the Mass Effect uh, romance scenes are actually valuable to the story. Very valuable. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, no, the, it, it's just so crazy. And, you know... Uh, but no, you know, I was thinking maybe we play some Dragon Ball uh, Xenoverse. We could do that, that. That would be fun, I think. Hang on, let me sign in. Oh, you're already signed. I'm not signed. You're signed in. I'm not yeah. signed. I'm not signed in. He's signed in. I'm not <laughs> signed. What? How did I get signed in? I'm so confused. Okay, well, I guess no. you won't. No, no. You can't see what's no. going on right now, ah. but... You might, <laughs> it's possible you're seeing us just kind of chilling in a basement, one of us on a toilet right now. The, the one on the toilet is me. I'm the fat ass. <laughs> yes. I'm just the pervert monkey. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he's the, <laughs> we call him Dimps, and I'm um, Havoc. <laughs> oh, man. And, and I'm the one who's crying, and uh, yeah. But what the fuck are you I don't doing, think we man? properly introduced ourselves, did we? I am Trigger. Yes, and I'm Edge. So you may refer to us as Trigger and or Edge. Oh, shut up, Trunks. What? You can also call me Edgeless if you want, but that's longer, so... Nobody you know. talks about Edgeless anymore. Might be hearing some potential loud music. It is okay. Um, It'll be fine. <laughs> yeah, and I don't think YouTube can do some copyright claims or anything. There's because, no way they can copyright. Because it's part of a game. And, it's part know. of a game, and we're playing the game. We bought the game. Yeah, that's another, that's, that's another thing. Like, what the hell is Susan doing to YouTube? <laughs> Susan? Yeah, what is Susan doing to YouTube, man? It's... Oh, yeah, I'm still a superhero. Oh, he's talking about Xenoverse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. <laughs> Just randomly. <laughs> oh, I'm still a super. I totally forgot. We don't have any freaking video. Crap. Yeah, it's gonna be great once you guys can see our tasty yeah, we're working, images. We're working on a uh, what is it? An Elgato, Elgato capture card. Uh, so. Fancy Spanish talk. 
Elgato. <laughs> <laughs> yes, fancy Spanish. Um, but no, I, I think we should start off by talking about mainly, uh, you know, how those stinky jabronis stole all of Wall Street Boy's thonks and uh, made them cry. You know, yeah, that, that was a tasty subject. That was a very historical moment, actually. That, that was a very historical moment. I, I would totally yeah. agree with that. That's fancy Spanish. Um, but no, I, I think we should start off by talking about mainly, uh, you know, how those stinky jabronis stole all of Wall Street Boy's thonks and uh, made them cry. You know, yeah, that, that was a tasty subject. That was a very historical moment, actually. That, that was a very historical moment. I, I would totally yeah. agree with that. And, I'm, I mean, it just really fits the last, like, couple of years that's been going on if, you, if you've lived this I, long. Hey, oh, also, something new that actually just came out today. Um, did you hear about what happened to CD Projekt Red? I did not. They actually, the, the creators of Cyberpunk actually got... Uh, like, most of their vital information leaked. Oh, like, yeah, their, yeah, like their personal info? Yeah, like, so they were, or, like, mainly, like, uh, data for, you know, their games, like The Witcher 3, mm -hmm. and, like, secret, trademark secrets, you oh. know, and a hacker got in and stole all of it and put it up for a ransom, and they were like, we don't negotiate with terrorists, <laughs> and, like, which is a terrible, you know... And then the FBI broke in? No, no, the FBI had nothing to do with it. But, like, which is a terrible, you know, idea, especially when your game is flopping that bad and everybody's eyes are on you, judging you, you know? Yeah. Like, um, you, you know, it, it's just, but then they ended up, the guy, they were trying to call his bluff, so they, uh, they said, no, we won't do it. They decided not to, and... Uh, he sold it on the black market for like seven point four million dollars or something like that. Mm. Like an insane that's a, amount of money. That's a quick book. Yeah, a quick book. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, some are actually speculating that uh, CD Projekt Red is the secret buyer. Oh, that would be that would make sense. <laughs> I mean, they would probably pay a lot of money for that. More than most people. Yeah, seven mil is is not an easy number to. Yeah, I don't know to. who could have bought it for that much, unless it was like maybe another company or you think. Treyarch. Uh, Treyarch is just stealing. Oh, go here. Yeah. Yeah, we're gonna go. there's nobody here. <laughs> um, we're gonna just be battling each other, probably. Yeah, we're probably just gonna talk uh, and fight each other with random people. Local. Yes. Uh, okay. So, uh, what what topics did you want to bring up? Um. Hmm. I mean, we kind of touched on the censoring. There was something else we wanted to talk about. I mean, you know, I think we should just talk about Dragon Ball because we're playing some Dragon <laughs> Ball. Just talk about some Dragon Ball. All right. We I, I, can, I can get in with that crowd. There's a lot of things I want to say, but I'm not sure how to go about saying them. <laughs> so let's do a, a solid Vegeta versus Goku match of Super Saiyan God. Super Saiyan God. All right. I'll show my power beyond that of Super Saiyan God. I'll show my power beyond that of Super Saiyan God. Shut up, Goku. You, you filthy casual. Well, you. You're like that one Vegeta that said Goku that one time. <laughs> no, don't. We're not role playing this right now. Uh, but no, um, actually, you know, it's really interesting. I, I don't know how many people felt about the, you know, whole. Oh my god! Stop! Stop it! How, how many? See. How many people felt about, um, you know, Dragon Ball Super? It, it was. Like, it was well-received, but it was also, like... Oh, my God. Goku is so OP. <laughs> no, I just... I've learned the strats. Um, so, yeah. So, Super wasn't really, you know, seen as good as... Oh you gosh. can't beat Rock the Dragon, bro. You can't beat it. Yeah. 
It's Dragon Ball Z is seen as <laughs> the pinnacle of Dragon Ball. And personally, I think I like Dragon Ball slightly more just because of the comedy. Like Dragon Ball yeah, or like, Dragon Ball Z? Like OG Dragon Ball as my overall favorite. But Dragon Ball Z is like a super close second for me. Oh, no. And, um, I think I didn't dislike Super. Super was pretty cool. It was pretty good. It just wasn't Dragon Ball Z, you know? Yeah, it was... I don't know. It just feels like they're just kind of prolonging things that don't really need to be there. Like, you know, transformations just get all crazy and stuff now. It's not just like OG Super Saiyan anymore. <laughs> Yeah, no, and, like, I, I understand that completely because, like, with the Frieza battle, they had no chance. Yeah. They had no chance until Goku uh, got on Namek and, you know, unlocked the true potential of a Saiyan. Well, not even the full true potential, but at the time, that's what they thought the cap was. Yeah, then just they would, super Saiyan. Yeah. Well, I, you know, what I don't understand is, is that, you know, like, they say Super Saiyan 3 is... Like, super, uh, like, energy-consuming. Mm-hmm. But what does that make Super Saiyan God? I think... Do I you mean, think it's, like, a different form? I of... think it's different because it uses, like, quote-unquote God energy. Well, I, Which is a I, thing, apparently, so... I, I suppose I can understand that, but it just... It just it feels they... kind of cheap-ish. Yeah, not... especially since Dragon Ball GT was super saiyan 4 and then you know like that's supposed to be in the future after super but yeah super saiyan god and ultra instinct just completely stomp super saiyan 4 yeah well, <laughs> and dragon ball gt is like i think it's sort of like a different timeline is how it's seen maybe because it definitely doesn't match up with super and i know it was made way before super so it almost seems like it's not worth watching GT, but it is because it's more old school Dragon Ball Z style. Yeah, it is. It is a bit more like Dragon Ball Z. I, they try to go back to the old style of Dragon Ball, I think, when they're starting the beginning of the GT now, I, series. I haven't watched much of GT yet because, uh, you know... Yeah, I'm trying not to say too much. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, won't, we won't tap into GT for a while. But I am nearing the end of the Frieza saga. Uh, when I, not like my first run or anything, but yeah, like, we're, we're both rewatching. This is like my fifth or sixth. No, it's gotta be more than that. It's, I've watched this series so many times that I can't even count it. Um, Same here. So I wanted to talk about how does, um, how does the ship that Bulma's dad make, how does it do like so much gravity stuff like that does? Because, you know, Goku, I want to talk about a specific scene of Goku when he's training before he goes to Namek. And he, like, forgets it's on a hundred times gravity or something. And then he goes to get food and sit on a bed. And then everything breaks. But does that mean that only Goku is, like, experiencing the gravity and the objects aren't? And, and if so, then later on... For the android saga you'll see vegeta training in there yeah 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 he started training in there uh then he they started training together in the hyperbolic time chamber after that didn't they yeah but what i'm trying to say oh, my bad. is my bad. <laughs> is like vegeta goes even higher in the new version of the ship into like times 400 or whatever and oh, no. you'll see objects like pushed into the ground as if they are affected by gravity but first of all like how are they not just squished how is anyone not squished under that even if they're buff and how is the ship well, not we squished? Got, we gotta remember that they are saiyans they're not human beings oh i want to talk about yamcha now yamcha oh yamcha yamcha <laughs> in one of the episodes yamcha was like if i if i can see vegeta do it then i can do it too and so Yamcha tries to go do like 300 times gravity and somehow even though I think he's weaker than Goku was doing 100 times gravity 
somehow he didn't get squished by 300 times gravity and was able to press the turn off button that Goku had to try so hard and like he broke all his bones to turn off. Well, you got to remember how, how many how, how many years progressed do you think between uh I, I think that was 2 years. And I know Yamcha was training and all. He had to have been trained because didn't he quit after a while? Sort of. I think that was I think I think he quit after the Android Saga. But I'm not sure. We'll have to get to that point into the Boo Saga and all that. Oh, the Boo Saga. Some people didn't like the Boo Saga. Yeah, I mean, some people just call Boo like a mix between Cell, Cell and like Frieza sort of because of all the transformations he goes yeah, through. Yeah, that, that's true. That's true. And he does absorb people like Cell, but doesn't he eat them like chocolate and then absorb their powers? It's been so long. Uh, I just remember the Super Boo version <laughs> where he just like literally puts his his like pink goo all over them and he just absorbs them like that, but. It, it was just weird to compare him to Cell in that way, because... He is almost less menacing than Frieza. Frieza was definitely one of the most specifically evil characters, I think. Like, diabolical. What are you? Cell was just concerned with the androids and then showing off at the end. Yeah, like, he was just chilling out. He's like, I'm gonna hold the Cell games. Ha ha! Yeah, he was super hey, cocky. yeah. And then he got thrashed by... Tr by Gohan. God, don't... Oh, yeah, that's right, <laughs> because Goku died again, didn't he? Yeah, he And then he's like, I'm gonna give you all my power, son. And he's like, they did the father-son <sighs> Kamehameha. Yeah, that was awesome. i just like to also say that in the Frieza saga, it took, like, all of Planet Namek as their battlefield, but for the other sagas, you know, it didn't... Like, the Cell games, that was just a platform they used to battle on pretty much. Yeah, they kind of just chilled out. Like, in, like, they n never really had a fight. Okay, correct me if I'm wrong, because I have not seen the entire series for a long time. And go ahead and let us know in the comments. If, if you're a massive Dragon Ball Z weeb like we are, you know, then go ahead and, you know, let us know if I'm wrong. But, um... Yeah, spam those dislikes if we're <laughs> spam wrong. Spam <laughs> those dislikes. <laughs> Every dislike is basically an up like, they say. Uh, Turn that <laughs> thumb upside down. <laughs> no, Caesar, no. <laughs> uh, but no, um... Didn't they basically just chill out in, like, the middle of nowhere? They didn't... Boo made his house out in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, the fat Boo. Fat Boo just chilled out in the middle of nowhere. And whenever he wanted to go killing, he'd be like, oh boy, here I go killing again. And fly off and destroy and cities. We're going to make some candy. And, <laughs> yeah, and then, he, you know, he even Mr. Satan was able to tame the beast. Yeah, he was just like, hey, <laughs> hey, Boo, please don't kill me. I want to be your friend. <laughs> Boo was like, okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, dude, that was great. <laughs> and then the evil Boo, Super Boo thing happened. It was because of a, a dog, right? A dog died, and Boo got triggered. And then, like, didn't he split between, like, he split him and it, Pure Evil Boo? Yeah, it's just like what Kami did with Piccolo. And, like, Pure Evil Boo was just, like... wasn't He wasn't at... He was more... He had to have been more OP than uh, Kid Boo. Because... Because if you think about it, like, Kid Boo still has uh, hints of purity. Because he's not pure black. That sounds wrong. That does sound wrong. <laughs> no, but okay, because he, because of the tone of the skin that Evil Boo had, he was like a grayish black. Yeah, he was a like a really thin gray Boo. And he was like super, you know, menacing and like. <clears throat> yeah, he was really spooky, actually. Yeah. Kid Boo is just like psychotic. Kid Boo is psychotic, and like the kid that's like, no, I don't want to go to school. Fuck you, mom. <laughs> but yeah. And, yeah and then um but then evil boo like i think he ate fat boo and yeah, then that's yeah. how super boo became a thing yeah which is super weird i admit but <laughs> it was the true power of majin boo just 
uh, locked under cage. And then later, Pure Boo, otherwise known as Kid Boo, was unleashed onto the world. And then I like his approach. He was kind of like Frieza, who was just more crazy because he just blew up the earth <laughs> without even thinking yeah. about it. Yeah, it didn't even, like, stop to think. Kind of not sure about the whole spirit bomb thing at the end, though, because Frieza took a pretty big spirit bomb and survived I, and was I, able yeah. to fight a Super Saiyan for a while. Well, wasn't there a lot more life on Earth, though? There, yeah, there was a and, lot more life he could drop. And Goku drop and Namek only used, like, the solar system, but he used the whole galaxy, I'm pretty sure. The whole galaxy. He used a lot. I when know he did boo. Sure. And then somehow Mr. Satan became the savior of everything. <laughs> yeah, because they wished everybody back to life, but Mr. Satan didn't die for some reason. And then it was like, I did it. It was me. <laughs> yes, yeah. give me your energy. <laughs> give me your energy. <laughs> so, what about them stonks, though? Oh, the stonks? We already went over them a little. Well, see, you know, we didn't really was, get too deep into it. It was so, such a mind-bending event, and I, you know, I really respect these kids on Reddit that were like, "Wow, well, you know, if we if we all buy this stock, it'll completely screw up what Wall Street is trying to promote." And then all these like eighty-year-old, you know, jerks, those little billionaires, billionaires are like sitting there, like, hey, "It's not legal. They can't do that." It's like actually, it is a hundred percent legal to you know it's, discuss. It's, it was a little stock. shady what they were doing already. Yeah, it, it was very shady. I, I don't know like the full extent of their shadiness, but I know that like what, um, what. Uh, you know, what the Reddit boys, I don't know what the Reddit forum was. Uh, I don't know if you know off the top of your head. No, I don't actually use Reddit, so I, <laughs> I just hear my news from people who do. Yeah, Reddit is not an easy platform to just hang around. Oh my god, destroy all humans. I That uh, was yeah. such a good game. Can it's, we play Uno? We can't. Well, I don't know if we can do split screen Uno, because that, you know. I don't I feel like that doesn't work because then we'd see each other's cards. Yeah, that wouldn't work at all. Um, <laughs> well, we can play real life Uno if you want. Nah, not at least not right now. Um, oh yeah, I was supposed to teach you how to play my my in person Gwent. That's right, Gwent. in person Gwent. Gwent is Gwent a game that you came up with yourself or? No, that was CD Projekt Red with The Witcher. And there didn't seem to be a physical version of it, which I think I have later disproven by searches. They have these card sets you can buy that'll have, like, you know, all the separate factions and stuff, if you know what I'm talking about in Gwent. And they look pretty cool. But I created a version which is pretty sketchy because I haven't tested it much yet. This is version 4, and my other friend, who I won't mention, but he knows who he is, um, we created versions 1, 2, 3, I believe, and then I created 4 on myself, because I lost the other versions, which is usually what happened. And then, you're just able to actually use, like, a normal deck of cards to play Gwent. And it's not the same, obviously, but it's super fun, I think. And, yeah. You got me intrigued. This sounds almost like a... I, I don't know what Gwent is, I've only played a little bit of Witcher... Um, but I, I'm intrigued. I'm very intrigued. You know, you gotta, you gotta know here that my edge boy here, my edge boy monkey, monkey aids boy, monkey. uh, is, you know, like a very technical, but also very, you know, very well expressed person, I would say. I think he's saying I'm just a nerd. I didn't say you were a nerd. I mean, I, I, mean, am, like, I work. But... I, I sit there and I bust my butt twelve hours a day in a warehouse. But yeah, no, it's like, I know you're a well-expressed person. It's not. Uh, it's it's not a nerd thing. And if there's anything wrong with being a nerd, then I am definitely uh, guilty of being such. Uh, I think the sort of 
hatefulness or nerd stereotype. Oh, oh he just dropped a controller. Don't mind me. Um, Ricky. The, I think the sort of stereotype of nerds is really shifted. Like, you know, the stereotype like the jocks just beat up the nerds. It had and to then, start with Bobbles, you know. <laughs> you know, Bobbles from Trailer Park Boys. Oh my gosh. You need McKitty. Now being a nerd is kind of like the cool thing. Cool kids club over here in the, in the basement. With <laughs> the all base, right, the basement crew. Basement, basement, basement crew. Making your facelift with the basement crew. But yeah, um, I don't have any underwear on. You can see my. Wait a second. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. Don't tell them that. No. We're, we are completely clothed, as you can clearly see. <laughs> In the <laughs> Definitely not just sitting next to a, a popping fireplace, half naked. Yes. So nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, definitely not. Um, but no, you know, let's tell them some of those stories. You know, we have so many good stories we, about. We have a, like, we just have we have a lot of history together. In yeah, person. we've known each other for you know, almost a decade now. It has think, to be about. I think over I've known you since I was eleven. It has to be about over a decade now. Maybe more even. Shit, we're almost nineteen. You know that's scary. Because, I am. Because you're not nineteen. You're not nineteen. <laughs> no. Basically, we're pretty young adults. We're young, but uh, we figure keep... things out. Yeah. You know, uh, you know, we're we're not even looking like I would love to take this on as a career, but. You know, as as it stands, it's not easy to get to a standing where people can look at your stuff and be like, wow, that's not trash. I'm actually going to listen to that. But, yeah, yeah, but like, no, if I could take this on as a career, I would drop, like, a drop of a hat, get out of where I'm working now, and just, like, you know, drop my 401k. I'm not really drop it. I'd probably still put money into it because I'm a responsible adult and mm. not, like, a... A California entitled boy. No, oh, no. There comes all the California just... Like... Not, not all of California is bad. It's mainly just the guys that get really popular by doing something silly and then like... Oh, like all the TikTokers? TikTokers <laughs> and you know, all, all these like 14-year-old kids that have like, you know, the perfect hairline and kind of look like, you know, like, uh, what, what's his name? Um... The Rock, you know. No, no, he played, <laughs> not The Rock. He, he played in uh, he, he played in Neighbors with Seth Rogen. Neighbors. Um, oh, God damn, why? Um, he's super popular. He's super, you know, on a on a non homosexual degree, hot. You know. Um, hang on, let me look it up. Oh yes. By the way, I feel like we're gonna have to somehow clarify this. We are. We are not against any sort of religions or sexualities <laughs> oh, or God. or anything. Zac okay. Efron, my bad. Like you know, like these kids that look like Zac Efron and and you know, uh, it, it's just they're like you know they're look they're, at how perfect I am. Look how perfect oh. I am, and like my perfect girlfriend with her perfect ass. <laughs> you know, it's like oh cool, yeah, you're so cool, man. You know, like. Because Watch an, me do these TikTok dances. Because an average human can't just sit down and be like, I'm beautiful. Yes, I'm beautiful. I mean, I know some people on TikTok aren't like aren't like that, but... Dude, I I, I don't use TikTok, so okay, I'm not I, too I have sure. a story. I have a story. I'm not going to name any names because I know the woman uh, pretty well. <laughs> we don't talk anymore, though. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, okay. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know where this is going. Uh, no, so. she has like 20,000, you know, likes or whatever they call them, TikTokers following her on TikTok. And she's a relatively attractive young lady. She was not very smart, though. Like, I'll tell you right now. She was like, she broke up with somebody and then was just like, I'm going to have sex with whoever, whenever, because I can. You know, and it was like, why wouldn't you, you know, be more stubborn about who you put out to? You know, it's like, it makes no sense to me, her philosophy on, you know, intercourse. But I was, like, into it, you know, I was, you know, like, oh, turning 18, she was 
17, almost 18 at the time. And uh, I was like, all right, I could dig it. And so we did it and everything. And, you know, it just, it just baffles oh, no. me. No, it was completely illegal. You know, I was almost 18. She was almost 18. You know, it was completely illegal. But, <laughs> and consensual, nope. because she actually brought it up. The idea, but like, and then we were going back from, because the condom that I had brought, broke, but I wasn't even close to done. So we had to actually drive down to the local store and pick up another pack. But she was freaking out, because she thought... Oh, my parents are going to be able to see what I bought from the store on my uh, on my account. I was like, no. No, they're definitely not going to be able to. They're going to see you have a transaction from the gas station. But it's, it's not going to be like Trojan condoms. Yeah, that's right. I said Trojan. No, that's we're right. not sponsored. Don't do that's it. That's right. <laughs> I said Trojan, not, not Magnum. What do you think I am? Like some sort of freaking like behemoth? Holy shit. I'm not a freaking, I'm not a god amongst men, okay? I could do the job just fine. Just look at us. Yeah, just look at us. We're just a couple sweaty fat jabronis sitting on a couch. Because... A toilet couch. A toilet couch. Yes. Yes. But no, um... That's basically how that story ends. Uh, I, I wish I had a little bit more to tell about that one. Sorry if the audio just got a little messed up there. Yeah, but, it's um, complications. But, no, it, you know, it, it, and down to the facts is she just was not very smart. And, but, like, just because she had looks meant every guy within a simping radius automatically flocked to her TikTok and were like, you're so beautiful, oh, my God. And I was just kind of like, all right, free lay, cool. <laughs> you know, I'm just chilling. Because I, I didn't really care either way. I knew that I wasn't going to end up with her. But, um... No. No, I don't believe I will be joining your party, Toxic. <laughs> um... No, oh, no, you, no, don't do this to us. Okay, so for you guys that don't know, we're, I'm just kind of like, you know, sitting at the home screen of the Xbox. And a friend of mine who I play For Honor with... Not sponsored by an Xbox. <laughs> Uh, we're not also we're also not sponsored by For Honor, but I'm gonna talk about For Honor because I love that game. Uh, he he just he, like spammed join party, and I'm like, no, no, I think I'm okay. <laughs> but um, yeah, I don't think he knows we're doing this right now. Yeah, no, he he doesn't. No, I'll have to tell him later. Maybe he'll subscribe. Maybe, maybe we'll get another subscriber out of it. Yeah, as we're speaking, we believe we have like four subscribers before even putting out a video. Which is super That's, cool. That is pretty cool. Actually. Thank you guys. To my friend, uh, Th we were able friend. to. What, what's the, what's his gamer tag? What can we call him by? Uh, he goes by Anti on a lot of like medias. All right. So thanks to Anti, uh, he shouted us out on his Discord server, and uh, which is probably where you guys are going to be coming from, which is super cool. Yeah. Uh, really appreciate you guys coming out, and you know <laughs> it's definitely going to get better as we go on, because this is just you know day one. <laughs> we just got all the recording stuff set up. In fact, Anti helped set us up. Uh, so I would yeah. show him some love. Yeah, uh, he has a YouTube as well. And he if, hasn't been very active, but and, yeah, maybe you, know, you guys can maybe help he push can him reboot to get him. active. Yeah, that he would was be actually awesome. he was actually growing before he stopped. Too. Uh, we'd love to, you know, have him on the podcast. You know, it would we be do really cool. want to accept special guests. We will be, and uh, you know, <laughs> unless you want like Zac Efron, which uh, apparently he. He's yeah, gonna be if you up. message him enough, maybe we'll have... Yeah, maybe we'll get Zac Efron to come hang out with us down in the basement of this small town. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but no, it, you know, I just... I, I love where where this is going, you know, and it's just a good pastime. I get to hang out with my friends a little bit more. Um, we just get to... some new people. We just and, get to talk. And yeah, talk a little bit. Which is, you know, like, what is really missing in today's society. Why do you think everybody's going crazy out there? Not, not only because of the political stuff, and we are going to stray as far away from that as 100% possible. There's, there's way too much stuff to talk about in politics. Because, you know, not not even, you know, it's more, it's just, more, of, more of I just don't uh, appreciate how aggressive people get about such a, yeah. a silly issue. We have who we have, even if something was done incorrectly or... 
you know, like, it's not, you can't change the past. You can only change the future. So dwelling on past subjects just seems like such a, such a time waster. Unless you're just talking about it for the, you know, for the fact of history. Or for even kind of like learning from your past experiences and trying to build yourself off them. Yeah. Or like, not make the same mistakes. Yeah. That, that's what we have history books for. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And, you know, I was a huge history buff. I love history. History can be pretty interesting. It's just in schools, they don't make things too interesting sometimes. Yeah, they just want to kill you with, uh, with knowledge. Like a bunch of random stuff you're never going to really use unless you're specifically going to that whatever you're learning about, like that <laughs> course. Right. And I can say, as a graduate, a lot of the stuff I've learned so far hasn't been too useful. But that, that I can say that that's not the same for everyone, okay? It's, so don't, like, quit school unless... Dear God, Unless no. you're for sure, like, guaranteed something. A high school education is very important because without a GED, without a general education degree... You cannot get a good job in this damn country. And I'm telling you right now, you young kids that are living at home still, it's not easy when you start out. It, it, you, you, I mean, yeah, just take our channel, for example. This this is... This is so this rough. Is off, yeah. This is so janky. We're off the bare minimum, yeah. minimum right here. <laughs> I yeah, can speak. Yeah, this is so janky because we don't know what we're doing and we're just having fun with it. But, uh... And we hope you guys are enjoying so far. Yeah, you know, I... Uh, you know, I know. I Feel free to leave in the comments if you want us to talk. I about know, I, I know that my uh, voice isn't that soothing, but I assure you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, kill their but I assure you that uh, I love you. I love you, senpai. I love you. Yes. Okay, that was just my random spurt of, you know, Tour I'm kidding, I don't have Tourette's, but it would be hilarious if I did. Because then I could get away with, you know, saying bad things, which I... Oh, is that a thing? It is a thing. That's you know, a thing? There was a kid in my school, uh, he did not have Tourette's, and he openly told us, oh man, I'm just messing with these teachers. He would blat this white-ass redneck... <laughs> He would be like, he would just randomly scream, you know, you know exactly what word I'm, I, I'm thinking of right I, now. I think so. You know, the, the, the very hard and harsh word from, you know, America's past that has so influenced this country ever since. And has become a very touchy subject. It is a very touchy subject. I think... You know, a lot like, of things in this day and age are super touchy for no yeah. reason, I think. I mean, that, that like one... Overly touchy, at least. That one can be touchy, but at the same time, it, it almost has a right to be touchy. Yeah, there was a lot of history to involve that for it to be a touchy subject. Yeah. But then a lot of the things today, it, it's like something lasts like a week or something, and there's like riots everywhere, and then... Yeah, yeah, exactly. People just going crazy on the internet. Well, I, I do understand that, and let me tell you, as a white American citizen, I do not agree with the way that those cops handled that. They should not have been treating him like that, no matter what color he is. You know, uh, that's as far as I'm going to go on that subject, but I, I will tell you right now, I do not agree with the way that that was handled. Yes, we are not racist in any way. <laughs> I we love might... the way that you said We are not racist, <laughs> I swear. Understand, we are not racist. <laughs> I'm not a crook. We, I'm not a crook. We might make some racist jokes every now and then, but that's just, that's just kind of the boys' talk. Yeah, I mean... The basement talk. You know, and, like, I probably have one of my friends get on in here, and, you know, that, that's going to be a little bit more dangerous, because, uh, you know... Depends who we have, but yeah, some but, people can't hold back some things sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm, I'm not one of them. Angelus is very quiet by nature. <laughs> yes. Sorry, sorry, you're, you're hearing us laugh all of a sudden, because... Uh, I, I accidentally We're said... We're not used to I accidentally user said names. his, uh, his real name. And that is a big no-no because, you know, I, 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 I could easily just spout out his social security number, which I don't actually know. And, like, yet. it would be... <laughs> yet? Are we getting married? What the... Oh, I don't know, man. <laughs> I don't know, man. 
But, um, no, I... Basically, we just don't think it's ready to be giving out too much more information. Yeah, no, we're, we're not ready for, you I know, mean, the if hate. you pick through our video of what it comes out to be, you'll probably find enough to, like, hunt us down and assassinate us or something. Oh, please don't. <laughs> please don't. My life yeah. is already bad as it is. I don't need to lose my co-host. Yeah. I have too many guns in my house. <laughs> you won't get me. Um, You'll just see this image once you break into the basement. So. Yes, you are going to see my chonky ass sitting on a <laughs> toilet with my co-host here, Edge, sitting there, you know, grinning at me. And yeah, we're, This is how we do our podcast. I'm, I'm sitting on the toilet right now. Didn't you know? Yeah. I mean, I think sitting on a toilet is a very good way to think of good <laughs> ideas. I mean, isn't that like how, um, who was it? There was somebody in history who sat on a toilet. And then they came up with something. I, I know a guy that died. So I don't know him personally, no. but a guy in history died. He had an aneurysm because he pushed too hard. That's going to be me, probably. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes it's it's rough sitting on a toilet, you know? Dude, yeah, it feels like you got a massive spike coming out your ass. <laughs> You know, an icicle because right now in the area we're in, there's a lot of snow. Like four the, inches of snow. I think it's all like a foot, actually. A I, foot. I put my arm in the snow today. You think it's a foot? Yeah, it came up to. It was there. It oh was my here. god! Yeah, if you don't know what he's talking about, it's like half his forearm. Yeah. You got some skinny forearms, my friend. Yes, that, <laughs> that's just a biological thing, I guess. That's fair. That's fair. You know, I don't even have the big, the chonkiest forearms. I could still almost completely wrap around mine. Yes. Yeah. And obviously, you know, everyone's born different. <laughs> so. Okay. Okay. Enough of this gonna... PC bullcrap. We're 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 talking about um. <laughs> okay, Billy. You're not gonna be the same as everyone else. Billy, we know you have ADHD. It's okay. Uh. I wanted to, you know, think what, you know, I want to know which of the few viewers that we have now, uh, what you guys would possibly think about, you know, like, uh, some gaming. Yeah, like, maybe in the background of our talking, just have gameplay. Or, like, us. ambient music, you know, like, we're probably not going to have music in this one, because I don't really know how to track down um, royalty-free stuff just yet, and I don't want to accidentally butcher it. Uh, yeah, we don't want to... Risk yeah. too much in this video. We're just trying to get like the the basics through. Um, let's see. I I want to talk about uh you know, oh man, you remember the trip to Wyoming? Yeah. Oh yeah. So here's here's a story. Here's a pretty long story. Oh, this will probably take us to the end of the video. Actually, I think. Um, it depends how we take it. Yeah. I actually wrote about this story in school for an essay, and I, I it was too. a long essay. I, I, I did too. Oh, that's cool, actually. Both of us pulling the same experience. Oh, it was we, we, we went to different schools, by the way. So I actually had, yeah, like, basically could have been merged into one, how close they are. But, on to the story, so... We you won't go, Yeah, we won't go into, like, all the details... For reasons of getting through the story, but also just personal information stuff we want to accidentally throw out there. Um, so basically, we're in a scout troop, right? Okay, a boy scout troop. This was before girls were allowed in boy scouts, but we won't talk about that right now. So, oh, and by the way, for those of you jerks that believe that every single boy scout troop has a pedophile in it, you're, you're dumb. You're, you're so stupid. You yeah, know, our troop was actually very... Just, I don't know, we were very family, a very family troop. Yeah, we weren't all related or anything, but, no. but it was like it a was small all, community. It was also not funded by a religious uh, council. We actually had a veterans group that was uh, sponsoring us. Yeah, so we weren't exactly like a Mormon <laughs> connection. Mormon was a huge, is a huge thing in scouting. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, for, for those of you that believe that that's just how it is... You know, you're dumb. Yeah. You're, you're dumb. There's a lot of bad talk about scouts these days, or at least there used and to be. Maybe there still is. Half of the crap that happened, it probably 75%, was all back before it was, it was just dumbass, don't tell kind of ago. crap. You know, like, because nowadays, 
the scouting stuff. If you guys ever if you, are considering it, look into it. You will see there's how a whole many background lot of, checks there are. There's a whole lot of rules and a lot of paperwork is involved. In fact, me and my co-host here are actually uh, signed up, I believe. Are you signed up to be assistant scoutmasters? I am. To, uh, you know, to help the younger generation, which actually we were in scouts with, we actually taught them what it means you know, to live by the code. Yeah, and there's sort of something that we left behind with them that they're still carrying on, just like how they act Which in, is amazing. in the troop. And it's a very, just like a very comedic um, vibe you get within the troop. It's amazing. Almost never serious there. It, it there, It's never serious. Even when we are being serious, you find the light. Yeah. You like, find the light. We find a way to just make the serious situations funny, and it helps you kind of engage with what you're doing and learning and paying attention to it. Yeah, yeah. If teachers were all, like, comedians, then I think schools would do way better. <laughs> I, 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 I kind of <laughs> I have to disagree with you there, Edge. I do, because, you know, laughing all the time, you're not paying attention. The only thing you're paying attention to is the next time the teacher cracks a joke. What know? if it's like a joke about, say, history, though? Well, yeah. if, you I can't mean, make a joke about history. You can make the, a joke. The closest thing about history that's a joke Don't make is... it bring up the World War II. <laughs> <laughs> was Hitler's mustache. Right. Yes. Well, then you're just going to be listening to your pals making jokes. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. It, it's, I, I think it, it's it's a it's good... Not, I don't think it's like a foolproof plan. Just I think if teachers were taking a different approach, not all teachers, but just some teachers maybe, kind of lighten up the mood a bit, maybe. I mean, my teachers were okay. There and was a lot of good ones out of there. Either way, you know, I, I think it's important to get back to what we were saying. The uh, story. The story, yeah. Um, so... The older scouts, uh, a.k.a. Uh, a man by the name of Captain Blue, uh, myself, Trigger. Uh, there was me. My co-host, Edge. Um, oh, who else was there? I mean, there's a lot of people, but I don't we, know we how to... We have a friend that was from, like, Arizona or something. I, I still know him. Oh, you mean California? Yeah, oh yeah, we called him California. Yeah, yeah, we won't say his actual name. We'll just, we'll just that, that's say... A good, that's a good, uh, that's a good coast name, because we called it, because his actual nickname was California. Yeah, we always called him California, never by his real name. Yeah, yeah, no. And basically, throughout the story, we're driving along, you know, we had a couple vans, and we were playing Xbox 360. Dude, we played, so, me and this guy right here, plus uh, Crash Override, uh, we were playing, we played so much Black Ops 2 Zombies. Yeah. That, like, I, I, I don't know what it was, but I was filling up plastic bottles, because we couldn't stop. We couldn't just stop all the time. Yeah. You know, because we're out in the middle of the pretty, desert. Pretty rare stops for, like, bathrooms or anything. But, like, I was filling up plastic bottles with piss like two to three you know like every two hours you know and it was insane i i didn't do this by the way this was just <laughs> this was just me I, I i don't know what it was my bladder was just like fuck this place from man. all those zombies man dude yeah i was playing so much zombies it was amazing yeah we were sitting in the back of a van like i was holding the screen while we were playing and there was like three of us back there just playing yeah. Black Ops 2 zombies like the whole way to Wyoming. Yeah, yeah, and I, I, we got so good at it. Our max round was like 60 or something like that. It was huge. It was pretty far. It was pretty far, and this is just like we weren't even playing transit. We were playing like farm. Yeah. And farm I mean, is we, not we an easy We did change little... it up a bit a few times. Yeah, but... we did. We did. Um, and there were a couple times when people were napping and stuff, but like... Yeah, naps were always nice on long Naps time. were nice. And it got really weird on the way back because we had a party member switch out. We uh, called him uh, Alexander the Great. Yes, yes. And uh, he was, he, he, you know, he was more of like the screw-off of the scout troop. He was the guy I mean, that was like... 
He's he's. Old, I'm not he's, gonna do anything because you know I don't feel like it. That's stupid, you know. And it's like, come on, man. I mean, he's all right, and he was pretty good at a few things. Yeah, actually. he was really good at like tying knots. Tying yeah. knots was a huge thing. With him. He was like second best in the whole troop. And then there was crash. <laughs> then there was crash over. Right? Yeah, he's like the overachiever. But he was the yeah he was the overachiever because one he was the scoutmaster's son. Yeah. So, like. Like, he had to be, otherwise his dad was going to be like, I hate you, you're not my son. This is just a joke, by the no, way. Obviously. If you're actually listening, <laughs> just know we're not actually If serious. you actually believe that he was, you know, like, no. Because the Scoutmaster was my uncle. You yeah. Know, and, and it's amazing because, you know, he was not, um, what's the word? He, he was not biased based on who you were, based on how long yeah, he had known you. He'd treat you the same way. Yeah, you w- it could be your first meeting there or the last one you ever go to, and he will always treat you as if you've been there forever. Yeah, he's a very respectful person. Very respectful, and it's very hard to disrespect a person like that. I've had my instances where I would get... I, I had problems when I was younger, so I, I, you know, I got really loud and uh, rambunctious. Yeah, a few, sometimes on some of our scouting trips, just the weather and conditions kind of get to you. Oh, yeah, it was pretty bad. I, I, I'm a very outward emotional person, so even, like, nowadays I can control that, but back then, you know, being 14, 13, 14, I, I didn't know how to control it because I wasn't, you know, like an adult. I didn't have those skills. A- Edge here was a, uh, a cut. Edge here was you know uh, is a much more quiet person so yeah i was kind of like the opposite way and then instead of becoming quieter and more contained i'm becoming the opposite way i'm sort of trying out yeah to it's, become it's working out slightly less of an introvert or like a shy person but it's just sort of a natural development i'm not like forcing it on myself It's because he literally lives in this basement <laughs> yes this is my domain <laughs> it is his domain you know it's like this is the home of the, the basement cast now yeah and we wanted to name the channel after the basement because this is like you know the humble beginnings <laughs> the humble beginning maybe forever and ever this will be our our It'll channel be like spot. Forty years old, balding, and sitting there like oh, still on the toilet. To, welcome to you know. <laughs> there's no way if somebody's putting that much time and that much effort into it, they're gonna make it. Because you gotta be. If you're yeah, if you're trying hard enough, you're gonna you gonna go far. You gotta be able to go far because there's no way there, there's no way that after that many years of pushing your limits. And working so hard at something. Pulling a Dragon Ball Z. Going Super Saiyan. Yeah, you know, our channel could just go, uh, Kaioken times 20. And, like, we could be at 20,000 subscribers. 20 million subscribers. 20 trillion. You know, wouldn't that be cool? I I, I think it would be amazing to actually grow a fan base. If we could even just get 100 subscribers, that would be so cool. That would be amazing. I would be so happy to have 100 (laughs) people. That. That That's actually so cool. enjoy listening to us bitch about <laughs> silly shit. Uh, Don't worry. That's that's just trigger. I won't do that to you. <laughs> <laughs> no. But, um, yeah. Oh, sh- sh- shut my mouth. We're back to the story. Yeah, uh, we're always getting off topics. No more off topics. So <laughs> that's story. gonna happen again you know that right <laughs> probably i'll i'll do it so we'll make sure let me start up the story and then i'll kind of give it to you all right go ahead go ahead so okay i'm gonna go grab something to drink yes okay trigger's leaving for a I'm moment over here. so i'm just in the background yeah you might hear some sounds but don't listen to him he's gone he's out of the studio no get out of the basement no anyway so the story goes, hey. a lot of people in a couple vans, okay, work, work. don't talk to me, you're over there, <laughs> a lot of people in vans, we rode to Wyoming to go to Camp Buffalo Bill, oh. and it was a, it was a summer camp, which we did every year except for, you know, the last couple times I think it was, because of the whole pandemic situation and all oh, that. Bitch. We're not going to talk too much of the future stuff, but at least right now. Um, So basically, you got to understand, we were a lot of people crammed in a van 
<laughs> okay, and it was really hot, really uncomfortable. So getting to Buffalo Bill was a huge relief. And no. we'd spend a week there. I, I know I'm interrupting, but is that is that really a holographic Charmander? Oh, I got that from McDonald's, actually. That is sick! Yeah. Is that like an actual Pokemon card? Yeah, it's an actual Pokemon card. What? When People did they are do selling this? those on, on the internet. When did they do this? I think they're still going. There's no way that they're actually giving out Pokemon. Like, like, yeah, they come, they come in Happy Meal. Dude! Why are we not going to McDonald's right now? I don't now? know, man. We're going tomorrow. <laughs> I'm for real. We, we're going to go tomorrow. I don't think the snow is going to allow us no, to it's go. No, <laughs> it's be, I'm beating the crap out of my co-host. Because... My, my sister doesn't like her Pokemon cards, apparently. I am... Dude, some of these Pokemon cards could be worth up to $200. I think that's just a shiny... Sherbander, but I'm not if sure. If we get a two hunt, no, that was a holographic. Don't don't sell yourself up. <laughs> that was. A... You want my shiny? Okay, I'm back. Sorry. Yeah. But but we're back. Um, Ed's taking. <laughs> Triggers the distracting one clearly. Don't worry about that nugget then. Okay. So, back to the story. Yeah, so we get to Camp Buffalo Bill. I believe, yeah, was this the camp with the horses or? Uh, no, that was Baldwin. Right. Okay. So yes, this was not a place with horses. Don't listen to <laughs> <that>. <laughs> This was a place where our main priority for the older scouts. I can't say about the younger scouts. It was kind of just a summer camp in a almost desert-like setting. Dude, it was freaking terrible. It was it was pretty hot there, and and there was like the sand was always on your calves. Yeah, and you couldn't wear pants because you'd sweat. It was always between your toes, man. <laughs> and there wasn't a whole lot of water, but there was some rivers we would go on for white water rafting, and we took like you know a, a day or two of learning how to do it with you know Scotty. Was his name? Who was our instructor? Oh, Scotty. And I think his name. Annie. Oh, I thought it was Maddie. Matt. It was Maddie. Yeah. Sorry, yeah, I'm yeah. so. Yeah, you know, Maddie. We can Annie, say their, very close. We can say their names because we don't actually know them. Yeah, we don't like, know them, and we don't like have any personal tie to them, and you're not gonna find them. Yeah, you're not gonna find. Them. <laughs> oh man. And what or they... and or kill them. Because yeah. I'm pretty sure they're, like, in a relationship, because that's how it sounded. I mean, that's sort of the vibe our, our group got, but oh, that, that might not be a thing. Just Boots! Don't interrupt the, with <laughs> Boots. Boots, you stay over there. <laughs> if you don't know Boots, we'll explain another time. Okay, okay continue. Uh... So there's these two instructors, right? They're teaching us. They're like, here, this is what a paddle looks like. This is how you get into a boat. I almost drowned on the first day at the lake. Yeah. We... You want me to talk about that real quick? Because yeah, I don't yeah. know if you guys know that. Takeover. I was there, but takeover on the on the like day day one of so in the like water. So day one on the lake, uh, they were telling us like capsizing our raft and everything, and like I was I unfortunately like on the right side of the raft, which is also the side that we were tipping, to like uh, to. What what is it? Capsize it. Sorry, capsize it. Um, and it uh, it sucked me in underneath it, and I'm sitting there and like I am like spazzing out trying to get out from underneath this raft. <laughs> it was so terrible. I came up. I was hawking out water. Uh, didn't actually have to like call an ambulance or anything because I barely. I didn't really tell anybody about it. I was just kind of like, oh god. Uh, it's but... just one of those things you you just get through <laughs> <laughs> it just happened yeah it just happened and i was like okay that, that happened um but yeah no that was a scary experience but pff, trust me that that was nothing compared to what happened on this trip yeah uh, this trip was one to be in the history books <laughs> oh yeah dude, this was all over the wyoming news uh, yeah uh you can probably still find the article which I don't know if that's a good idea. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, <laughs> they shouldn't have any close-ups because I, you know, we were sitting there. Uh, okay, don't that... don't cut the story. <laughs> <laughs> we, let's not get to the climax yet, but <laughs> uh, climax. <laughs> okay, so 
skipping over just a lot of unnecessary details. Yada, yada, yada. Trace. Because it was an entire week. There's a whole lot to explain. Really, so, we only were on the water for like four days. Yeah. Out and of seven. Basically, every day on the water, we'd wake up really early at like six. Oh. And then get on the water in rafts. And each day would be progressively more difficult um, rapids. And we saw some wildlife. It was fun. You know, beautiful. It was pretty easy sailing for like the first couple days. And it was exciting too. Like I, I remember it was heart pounding. You're not, you're just going. Yeah, and it was. It just felt really good because of the hot Wyoming sun. Oh, the ice there cold was, glacier water. There was no clouds at all. Yeah. It did not rain once when we were there. I I believe. Yeah, there was barely clouds. Oh no! It rained. It rained. Did it rain? It only rained. Later on in the story. Later on? Wasn't that like the last day or two, though? No, it was when... You know what happened. Was it that day? Yeah. Because... It, okay, hang on. I okay, remember... We'll, we'll get, I'll, yeah, we'll we'll, get into we'll it. We'll get to that later. We'll get into it. Yeah, we'll get it. But long story short for like the build-up of here, basically each day it got progressively harder. We went over higher class of rapids and all. Um... There was a lot of stuff that happened, and our groups were constantly switched around with different people and such. Yeah. So we could, you know, better build our teammate skills. Learn to work with other people. We were also with people we did not know, like, from other troops, and that was cool. Uh, like, California, we mentioned. He was he was a cool guy. Yeah. California, you know, uh, later on in the story, I, I got a heroic story about him to tell. Yeah. So... You know, day one, there weren't really much. Day two, there was some pretty good rapids. Day three, I think there was a bit on the end. There were some pretty big rapids, but it was generally calm, I believe. Yeah. And... Day four? Day four was day four the I day? I believe day four was the day. Well, okay. It was the day. It was the day that everything that could have gone wrong went wrong. The day of reckoning for Scout Troop. Uh... Three, two, twenty-nine. Because I'm not gonna actually put our real scout troop in there. Yes, don't look up that troop. We don't know. I don't know if that's a real thing, but it could be. <laughs> anyway, so um, you see, I was. Were you in the front boat or the back boat? I was in the back boat. Okay, we can, I was we, in the can, boat. That's good. We can, tell, we can tell how it was for each of us. Yeah, though. The, it was pretty insane because I had uh, our scoutmaster on my boat too, and he he powerhoused. It was Oops. good. It, it was really good. Um, I'll go. I'll go first. Wait, so, shouldn't the first boat go first? I don't know. It doesn't. I mean, <laughs> I sure. I'll just go first and set it up for All your right. big reveal. But just know, uh, like it, this place was called. You might have gone down it. You know, it's called the Devil's Elbow. Yes. And it was there's this little cave within it that you're supposed to alley. Is it alley? It's alleying. I believe it was an alley. Yeah, it, you're it's kind of more to... like a pocket in a cliff. Yeah, but you have to like alley. It, it, it's called alleying, I think. It's basically a drift in water. <laughs> and then you just kind of sit there and wait for the other teams to catch up. And this is Edge. Edge's side of the story takes over. Right. So we're coming up to Devil's Elbow. Um, and I was in the first raft with um, a lot of scouts. There, I don't think there was... I don't think there was any other adult except for the other instructor. So it was just scouts. Oh, your father. Was he? Yeah, because we I thought had, he was in the had, other one. No, he. We had uh, Mr. Mr. Override. Okay. But didn't we have him? No, 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 no. I'm, I'm pretty sure I remember. Okay, let's not talk too deeply on the details. Okay, yeah. But... Basically, all you need to know is I was in the first raft. Yep. They were in the second raft. You guys have a scary. And, and we went over the Devil's Elbow. There was some big rapids. Like these were some... And you got to know, they were waiting for us to catch up because our instructor, we had... Uh, you guys had Maddie. Yeah. Uh, we had... Uh, Scotty. So We had Scotty. And Scotty was like, okay, we can't go too fast because the rapids are insane today. Um, so we slowed down and you guys decided to alley in the, uh, the cave, correct? Yeah, in the Where pocket, which was... I referred to as Del Devil's Armpit. 
Yeah. Because it was like perfectly lined up. It was like you were going up his arm. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and it just got worse like the further you went up. But this sort of pocket area had, um, it was pretty it. calm. No, no, no. It was pretty calm water on the top, but below. It was they it, what what is called a hydraulic. Yeah, uh, which, which is basically like a whirlpool almost that kind of pulls exactly. water under from the surface. It, it, yeah, it's almost like if you had like a, a, a tire and you were spinning it in water, like how it like sucks the water that's up down and you know, spin to uh, whirlpool in the water that sucks the water up top down to the bottom, which is ridiculously dangerous. Yeah, and you can't really tell it's a thing until, unless you were, like, jump in the water, maybe. Yeah. Which yeah. we'll get to in a moment. <laughs> uh, so, so, basically, my group, we went through the rapids. I think we almost tipped once right before we got on. I didn't see But, <laughs> yeah, they were a little ways behind us. We managed to sort of ferry our way on into Devil's Armpit. We sat there, and we're waiting up against the sort of wall of the armpit cave thing. Mm -hmm. And we were waiting for the other raft to catch up with us so we could continue down the river. Now this And then is, this is Trigger's this, part. This is where it gets interesting. So we come in, and we uh, link up with them. We bump into them, actually. So we, we come in and we hold ourselves a little bit like, you know, it's almost like a Spartan row. They're like, row, row, row. Shield wall. And, yeah, shield wall. <laughs> and, but like we, we braced ourselves a little bit and we hit them. But the thing was, because of our impact with them and the hydraulics that were underneath their boat, they started tipping up and getting crushed against the wall. And now, while we were being crushed, their boat was also being, like, pulled under our boat. And so, it was like we were both flipping in the completely yeah. terrible direction. So, it was actually the other way around, though. I, I remember. It was, you had our scoutmaster, and we had your uh, your dad. I we, think we so. We had your dad. So, um, our scoutmaster uh, literally, you know, just strong man, put his <laughs> arm against the side of this massive cliff. And just rammed his foot down, at like like it was like a desperate, like he was saving his own kids, you know. I mean, like, it kind of was. Well, it he was, was one of those moments. He was obviously because one, it's like a family, you know. And like he just rammed his foot down and shoved it flat long enough for everybody to bail out of the boat. Yeah, and then us on the, I guess now the top boat, we were. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Don't don't read into that. <laughs> on the so on our first raft, we were all also helping to hold the raft away from the wall because the wall was really rough and rocky, and it hurt a lot to touch, especially with us being crushed against it. And so we were told to essentially, while there was an opening, we were told to jump off the front of the raft into this freezing into this, cold water. Absolute like coldest water it, it puts you into shock it literally puts you into shock so everybody we were very lucky to get on to shore because like for the first five seconds which when you're floating down a river going that fast yeah it, that is a very long time when i jumped in my personal experience i went after i think i went before crash and okay. he jumped in Maybe it wasn't Crash. It might have been California? someone else we, I don't think we can mention by name. So, he jumped in. I followed suit. Mr. And, Squirrel? Yeah, Squirrel. Squirrel. Yeah, Squirrel. Okay, so I think Squirrel went in before me, and then I went in. And when I went in, it was just utter darkness <laughs> under the water. It was... And I felt like I was kicking my legs, but <laughs> I couldn't actually feel my legs moving. Like It, was... it felt like I was, <laughs> was just drowning. It was terrifying, and man. I literally bumped <laughs> into just this one big rock underwater, oh. and then it like bumped me up above the surface. Did and... you have your glasses on? I did have my glasses. Did, you... did they survive? I think I took them off before jumping in and put them in one of my... Um... One of my pockets. Life raft pockets. Yeah, one of those pockets. Yeah, and yeah. I was like, I'm not losing these. <laughs> I was thinking, I was like, wait a second. <laughs> yeah, because no. I can't see at all. 
I I have one a hero story about two people. Well, three actually. One our scout. There's a lot of there was a lot of hero. Our scoutmaster, you know, honestly, like if he didn't do what he did and put himself in danger, we, you know, everybody on that first boat would have had a huge chance of drowning. Drowning um, on rocks. Drowning on rocks. <laughs> Yeah, and being, like, crushed against the the wall. Like, that could have been some pretty serious damage. Yeah, lots yeah. of bruising, scratches, bleeding. A messed up, yeah. Especially like, because we'd still have to eventually get off the raft somehow. So, Into me, the freezing cold water. Me being, what was I, 15? I think I was 16. We, we were about 16, because we're we're the same age. You're a couple months older than me. Though. Yeah, I'm, I'm an old man. So, yeah, and he's got a full freaking <laughs> face of... Of hair, yeah, if you and I'm over here with my blonde baby face. We look just like our, our monkeys here. Yes, yes we do. But, uh, so then, when my experience jumping in was, uh, you know, like, coming up and just being like, <gasps> and not being able to let anything out but a scream. Like, help me! Oh, God! Because, like, I, I literally was barely able to grab onto a rock that was, like, halfway under the ground. You know, and it wasn't a huge rock. It was like one of those ones on a rock climbing wall that like just enough for you to grip onto to climb up. Um, and California goes flying by and he like stops and he like tries to grab me, but he keeps sliding and everything. And then all of a sudden I feel some guy just like grab the back of my, uh, oh, grab my, part. grab my straps, the straps of my, um, of my flotation uh, vest and yank me up out of the water like full strong man yank a 16 year old which you know I was a hefty 16, 16 year old as well so yank me out of the water and I look up and it was Edge's dad yeah. you know he like I would have gone down that river if he hadn't grabbed me right there I, I would have died hey guys <laughs> We just wanted to say thanks for listening to our, like, hour-long year. Yeah, man, it's like 2.30 in the morning. I am dying. Yeah, we've been working on the edits of the previous um, parts of the video as well, so we're actually getting this slightly later than the rest of the video. <laughs> yeah, you know, um, honestly, I just we just want to say we appreciate uh, those of you who decided to tune in and stick around to the very end. Um, and hopefully you will come back for the next episode because uh, we do have a lot more stuff to cover. Yeah, and we just wanted to also let you know if you have anything you want to hear us talk about or any tips for us maybe, uh, any positive feedback, any like constructive criticism, anything, just, just comment. Okay, don't... Don't be a scaredy cat, okay? We're we're all like boots over there. And for now, I suppose we could say adios and hasta la vista. Raccoon! Raccoon!